Sometimes in stop motion animation, just like in the movies, you might want to alternate focus between two characters within a scene. A focus pole. And it can be kind of hard to do that smoothly when you're, well, doing it frame by frame and not in one fluid motion. In the movies and with high budget projects, you can control your focus electronically. But for us solo animators working in our bedrooms, or in my case, what used to be my garage, well, we need to go back to basics. Or do we? Well, if you happen to have Dragon Frame, then actually I have a great hack. If we go into the cinematography window, where we would go to check our focus anyway, there are these nifty little arrows on the left and on the right. And what do they do? Well, they actually nudge your focus by varying amounts from small to large. So you don't actually need to go in and touch your camera at all to change your focus. I know, really. It's great, isn't it? So get your hands away from the focus ring and we're gonna use these buttons instead. They're gonna allow us to control things and with the different arrow options available, we can even easily ease in and out of our shift in focus too. Now, if you're animating with the DSLR, you will have all of the cinematography functions available in this cinematography window. And the f-stop setting is what is going to determine your depth of field, which is essentially the depth of the plane of focus within your shot. So if you have a really high f-stop, more of your shot is going to be in focus. So you can have something in the background that's quite sharp as well as something in the foreground. But if you want that cinematic look where you have a really sharp character and then a really blurry background behind, you're going to want to have your f-stop as low as possible. And you might have to compensate with other settings to get your shot to look how you want, but keep that f-stop really low. And you can see here that I've got a nice sharp cactus in the front and the one in the background, well, it's just a bit of a blur. So in this example, we want to switch focus between these two cactus plants. So let's begin with focus on the character closest to us and we'll start to nudge that focus away ever so slightly frame by frame. And just like we would ease in and out of our motion, we want to do that here too. So I'm gonna start by using the single arrow key to give a really nice ease out and then I'm going to jump up to the second arrow key to give a slightly bigger nudge and we'll do this for a few more frames before we go back down to the single arrow key to ease into the new plane of focus on our second cactus plant at the back there. And when we play things back you can see that it looks super smooth and because we are controlling this digitally it's super repeatable too. When you've worked out how many nudges that you need to make to get from one plane of focus to the other, you can write this down and repeat it over and over. So if you always have characters on different marks within your scene, a bit like when they put tape down in a TV studio, you're going to know that every time you use that sequence of nudges, you're going to get your focus to land precisely on that second character. But what if you animate with a DSLR and you don't have dragon frame? I know there are many of you out there, and well, there is an old school method too, where we can move that lens manually frame by frame if we have a steady hand. So what you're gonna need is some masking tape, a short ruler and a pencil, maybe a Sharpie too, and of course your DSLR. This technique unfortunately isn't one for phones. So the process here is pretty simple. We will start by cutting off a length of tape around six inches long, then pop your ruler next to it and with a pencil or a pen if you prefer, make marks alongside the marks on your ruler. About two millimeters apart or you can just use whatever measures are on your specific ruler. We are now going to wrap this tape around our camera lens. Make sure not to cover the focus ring though because we still want to enable that to move. If you're using a zoom lens, you'll probably want to stick this on the zoom ring. And if you are using a prime lens, then just make sure it's not touching the focus ring. Now, each frame, we will move the focus ring one mark along the tape. And to measure the distance needed for the focus pull, we will mark the plane of focus for each character in the scene using a couple more bits of tape. And we'll attach these to the actual focus ring in the correct positions. Now, if you have a specific duration that you need the focus to change in, we can count the marks between the two points that we have just made, and we can then divide that between the number of frames that we need the focus shift to happen in. 
Now make sure not to disrupt any other settings on your camera when you are touching the lens. Any change in zoom or f-stop will mean that all of this working out has gone to waste and the focal distance will have changed. If you're worried about moving your zoom ring, make sure that that is firmly stuck with some tape too so that that cannot shift its position just in case. So yeah, I hope this made sense. If you want more tutorials on DSLRs, let me know in the comments. If you want more tutorials and tips on Dragonframe, equally, let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a big like and subscribe to the channel for more content from me every single week.